Hi, everyone. Hi. So I'm going to preach to the choir here. Um, I'm Max Romy. I'm an artist. I'm a filmmaker. But I am definitely not alone. We are in a gallery that I just learned. There's some Sydney M. Lawrences over there. I did not even realize it because they did not stand out in a gallery full of local art, which is bonkers that you could have like one of the most famous Alaskan painters not even really be that like fancy compared to like all of these local painters on the walls. Really cool. So I'm going to preach to the choir today um, because art and science have the capacity to change this world and all of your voices are there and are so important. And if you don't believe me and you think I'm full of it, trust me, I can give you a quick example and then prove to you that your voice could change the world. So really quick, show of hands, do we have any artists in the room? OK, so we've got all the bunch of liars in the room is what I'm seeing. Should be about 100 um, percent. Any scientists? Less. Wow, crazy. OK, that's all right. That's all right. We can, we can work with this. Um, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show just how important your voice is, because I could talk about art all day, but I think that Cordova punches so high above its weight in, in artists per capita that that I'd just be preaching to the choir. But what is really important is just how much of an impact your voice can make on some of these things. And uh, I found this out pretty early on. Um, I love getting outside. I love being in landscapes like this, seeing the kind of things that you see kind of represented on this wall, although maybe not quite as many bears as what I normally see in the <laughs> wild. But uh, as a young person, I remember seeing just like all of these beautiful things and then being totally overwhelmed because I wanted to do something about it. But I felt like it's very small, very small voice in a very, very big world. And I thought the art I make would never really do anything. I wanted to be a scientist, but it seemed like one small data point would never do anything. You know, it's you feel infinitesimal. And I also was dealing with a lot of, well, I grew up dyslexic. So any dyslexics in here? It's, it's one in five. We should have at least like, okay, we've got one. One brave one at least. Nice. So one in five. 20% of the population dyslexic. But it means that uh, I struggle with reading and writing. So those were always more difficult for me. And so when I was younger, I kind of wanted to make stories and I wanted to tell people about all of this. And nobody could really see past the spelling mistakes because I have a lot of them. My wife Eve can point. I still have quite a lot. I just married a spell checker, which is great. But uh, it was tough because... It's, you know, you want to share something and, and it, you might feel small and then dyslexia like really threw me for a loop. So I found refuge in, in my sketchbook. Um, not this one. This is, I would have these little tiny sketchbooks. And I loved them because I could make a sketch and no one could find a misspelling in it. You know, you hand somebody a sketch of a bear and they get it. Or you hand somebody like some color of a landscape and they get it. And you couldn't really misspell it. And so that kind of grew and grew and grew. And Dyslexia is always going to be around me. Like I still struggle with reading and writing um, in a really big way. But all of a sudden, I have this really crazy skill as a painter and a uh, you know painter in the outdoors. I love getting outside still, and now I love painting. And then I found filmmaking later on, which is like putting all that together. You can make these huge films, get all your ideas across, never s put a single word aside from the title, which I would still misspell occasionally which is really bad when you like send it to somebody and like the one thing that you have written out is misspelled. <laughs> but uh, with all three of those, all of a sudden, I was able to kind of unlock this whole world. And now I was able to kind of combine art and science and all these big ideas in a really unique way. Because there's a lot of filmmakers out there, and there's a lot of painters, and there's a lot of people who like to be outside, but there's not a lot of all three. And because of that, it kind of helped me uh, unlock my voice in a lot of ways. And so now I'm working on a bunch of projects with marine debris, kind of the ocean plastics, combining art and video and kind of being out there. I work with a lot of brands like Patagonia and Normal um, and maybe Rumpel. We're hoping Rumpel soon. But they're these big brands, but that combination of art and then you're able to kind of pull these big ideas and this science in there. But without being dyslexic, I never would have discovered the sketchbook and I never would have been able to kind of move forward with that. And so the, I'm not going to preach too much to the choir, but the example I want to show and why your voice is so important is that every single person here is one out of 8.5 billion. And it often feels like that's a bad thing, right? If you're one out of 8.5 billion, it might be 9 billion by now. It's a lot. It's, it's going up fast. But if you're one out of 8.5 billion, it kind of feels like nothing's going to matter. But you flip that on its head, it actually means you're the only person who could tell your story in the way you do it. So whether you consider yourself an artist, or you consider yourself a scientist, or a writer, or 
a dancer, whatever it is, your voice is super important, especially when you can kind of find that Venn diagram of those things that really make it unique. So for me, it was that dyslexic into sketching, to video, to being outdoors. Uh, and so I can, uh, can I get two, uh, two volunteers really quick? I need your arms as a circle. Normally I have a big notepad. No volunteers? Okay, here, come here. So, so I just need a big old circle here. Perfect, thank you. Okay, we'll start here. Okay, big old circle. We'll start with filmmakers, right? Uh, I assume everyone here is a filmmaker. If you've got a phone, you're a filmmaker. If you've got a black magic, you're definitely a filmmaker. iPad, we've got at least three filmmakers here, but you all really are. So we're talking about like maybe a billion filmmakers in the world, right? So I'm like one of a billion. And so my story is kind of rough when I kind of put it in that way. If I try to make a big film about something that's important with that art, it's not going to go anywhere. But I'm also a filmmaker who paints which is there's probably about like 100,000 of those, maybe, maybe even more. And so like that really narrows it down. So okay, you're going to go like this, and you're going to kind of like do that. Nice. <laughs> nice. Great. OK, so we have 100,000. So like right now, we're talking about you know, maybe 50,000 people, of all the filmmakers and all the painters. It's like maybe 50,000, maybe 100,000 right there. And then all I need to do is add like one more circle, you know, like a kind of tiny one, maybe like um, somebody's focused on bears, perhaps. You know? And all of a sudden, you are one out of maybe two. And the other ones probably lives in Russia or like, you know, <laughs> Kanchaka or something like that. And so all of a sudden, this huge pool of everyone on Earth, this 8.5 billion, just gets shrunk down to one of one. And to be able to tell those stories and be able to share that is hugely impactful. Uh, thank you very much. You are amazing. You can add that to your Venn diagram, human models. is hugely impactful. And so because of that, that kind of like reframing, all of a sudden it made me realize just how important each of these voices are, which you think might be kind of boring for a show if I said there was going to be an art show and everybody painted the same thing. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a, like, a, like a middle school, you know, what you might find on the wall where everybody does the same art project. But even right here, all of these are just bears and the amount of perspectives and ways that everybody's captured it is absolutely fascinating. And, and that's kind of what I see when I'm looking at all these faces is there is 35 or 40 very unique perspectives of those Venn diagrams. And once, once you tap into that, your voice is so powerful and so impactful and entirely unique. And when it comes to something like art or science, the world needs a lot more of that. There's, there's so much data now. We could graph the moon, everything from here to the bottom of the ocean. But those personal perspectives and those ones that you can speak to that nobody else can have never been more important. And with the challenges that we'll likely face into, you know, next two centuries, being able to share those perspectives uh, in everything from art into science and that little intersection in between, whether it's you know, on a canvas or through a video screen or even on a sweater, uh, can make all the difference in being able to connect with the world that we're in and be able to help share that very unique perspective in a very understandable way. So I'm so excited to, to be able to, to be here and share this weekend with all these incredible people and also kind of learn that unique voice that you have because we all benefit from it. All right. Yeah, I rarely have good answers. I'm 28 and have had a good amount of life experience, but I do know what not to do. So if anybody has questions, I've made most of the mistakes. <laughs> Whether it's in art or film. If I may, if I came to town and I don't have the funds to do this sort of thing, like that I need a sketchbook or some paint, can I get them in town? You can get them at the net loft if you need <laughs> you do need to borrow something or that, I'm happy to, you know, get somebody going. If they're if they're here for the weekend, I can help get you set up with what you might need for, for taking your class. Yeah. And we've got the bare essentials, but also Honestly, what is it, like necessity is the mother of invention? Uh, uh, like sometimes forgetting something is definitely the best way, the best way to learn something new. So never be afraid to just go in with like a piece of what you actually need. <laughs> what about level of expertise? That's something that people might want to know for both of the classes. What oh, level yeah. of expertise would you say? For classes and just art in general, uh, if you think you're an expert, you're wrong. Um, and if you don't think you're an expert, you're definitely wrong. So I would say if you're, if you're interested in whether it's like taking a class or just starting, always, always just jump, jump in two feet forward. Um, it's, 
it can be kind of nerve-wracking, but honestly, sometimes knowing too much is what actually gets you in trouble. So if you're if you're ever considering like taking up a new art form or or joining a class or whatever it is, definitely um, be afraid because it's terrifying. But just know everybody else is as well, and so you're always in good company. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, like so. This is um, this is a sketchbook from. Uh, these are some bears from Katmai. Um, I took a lot of photos, uh, but like these are kind of seared in my memory, and it's kind of a funny thing. And there's probably a lot of sketches in here as well. But for me, I could take a thousand photos, and they're just they're there. They're on a camera. And I can look back at them, but I know exactly where I was, what I was doing, with almost every brush stroke. It's almost like it gets kind of like painted into my memory, like along with the page. Which is a funny, a funny thing, because I can write all the words and essays on Earth, but like, just it's gone as soon as it hits the page. But sketches are something totally different, and so I'm still very new to mushrooms. Um, they're wild. My, my wife Eve is is a basically a gnome when it comes to like <laughs> finding these out. She knows she knows so much about them, but uh, for me it's super new, and so I'm so excited for this weekend because by sketching mushrooms, like all of a sudden, like the colors and just kind of how they fit together, it's like a whole different part of your brain that we used to we used to exercise and value but it's kind of been lost as soon as we can just take a thousand photos and the click of a button but it's you miss out because you get just like there's something tactile about it yeah